All right, hold the phone. Actually, that's ironic. I had a number of sessions with a therapist, uh, mainly for the purpose of just sharing ideas and the world, the values. Uh, he thought he was therapizing me, and I thought I was just having someone to talk to. Sometimes you get to the point where you like to have a regular person you can talk to. Most of my conversations are short and sweet uh, with people. I have a window of opportunity. Think of this. <clears throat> the sharing of the faith of your Christian faith, as you get more and more experienced in it, nevertheless, it's just a window. It's a very short period of time, maybe seconds, minutes, two or three times. Occasionally, here and there, you bump into the people at the store or wherever, and you get to share, but you have to get very pointed to the to the right to the subject, but uh, as well without offending uh, needlessly. But um, you have very little time, so you don't have time to banter around too much. So I have a, a little sense of humor that twists things back to something uh, that is w uh, more important. We're, we're being friendly, so as you say, well, what's on your mind? Here's what's on my mind. First Corinthians chapter one. I'm just finishing it up. Why are you doing that? Now I'm glad you asked. We get to that, but that's only going to last a few second or two. <clears throat> anyway, these therapy sessions were lengthy uh, in terms of number of times, but only 45 minutes. So, what is the value of therapy to the believer, especially if the therapist is a weak Christian or not a, a Christian at all? <clears throat> Here's the conclusion I had for the last session. He wouldn't permit me to speak. Shut me down. Uh, drew conclusions, unwarranted, in 45 minutes. I'm not permitted to speak to others about Jesus if it causes a negative reaction. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm not omniscient. See? Uh, and the, the problem is, where is that in the Bible? Nowhere. How about the Christian responsibility relative to that anyway? How much should I know? Is a soldier supposed to uh, be responsible for the outcome of the battle or the war? He's just got his minutia little detail. Get in that foxhole and defend that little corner of the battlefield. So let's look at the Christian responsibility relative to the contending of the faith. I'm going to go back to the original. I need to underline some things here. I like to fix things as I go change ideas or fix uh, typos and so on. One may ask the question, is it acceptable for an employer or anybody to restrict a Christian's freedom of speech if the subject of that speech is offensive to another but not to God? Often the objector is the one who prompted the Christian's response or someone overhearing a private dialogue. Furthermore, is this kind of restriction justifiable in light of the allowance of the discussion at any time of any of many subjects which are truly offensive, such as, how often do I hear this? I don't have a right to object. Repeated obscenities, vile stories, suggestive language, the Lord's name in vain continuously expressed, the acceptability of unbiblical sexuality as an alternative lifestyle, the ridicule and condemnation of the biblical viewpoint about homosexuality, persistent reiteration of non-Christian beliefs and practices as the only acceptable way. That's what's demanded of me in my my session with this fellow. Ridicule of the biblical viewpoint is an offensive and closed-minded attitude. The answer as to whether there is a valid restriction of Christian-like behavior anywhere and the answer as to what the Christian responsibility is must come from the only reliable and inerrant source of information about this subject, the Bible. Now I'm saying to my therapist or anybody else, if you don't like the subject, then let's sit and talk about it. Of course, as soon as I <clears throat> put his feet to the fire and say chapter and verse, he got angry. Well, I'm just going by what the book says. Correct me if I'm wrong. A thorough study of the Bible strictly following the built-in rules of interpretation. Language. Nothing scientific about this. Not, nothing uh, rocket science about this. Context and logic. Simple reading skills. Simple reading skills. And I have a, 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 a button. I'm going to put a button here. Magical button. 
here's a magical button. And on that magical button, I'm going to put a link. See my link? It's the proper way to interpret the scriptures. Nothing magical about it. You just read it in the order that it was written. Using proper dictionary definitions, usage, you know, context, and simple rules of logic. So, this will reveal that God's Word indeed is the only completely reliable and inerrant source of information about the condition and responsibility of man. Now, if that's my philosophy, that's fine. You have your ideas, I have mine. But you can't say, I'm not allowed to talk about my philosophy before others if the reaction is going to be negative. Wow. What about sports? People say, well, my, my favorite football team is so-and-so uh, because it's so-and-so. And you get an argument about it. Well, you shouldn't have brought that argument up because you because you have a favorite uh, team. Maybe uh, it's an out-of-town team. Uh, in San Diego, and the baseball especially, just about every, all the fans are non-road uh, rooters for the Padres. Uh, when, when, uh, when the um, Boston comes into town, or the Dodgers especially come into town, uh, more, more people in the stands uh, are for the Dodgers. The following topics and supporting passages from the Bible provide information as to the responsibility of the believer on this matter. Seek first the kingdom of God. Okay, now that may not enter into the conversation. But behind it all, that's it. Prepare. That may not enter the conversation, except for the fact that if you prepare, you're going to have some really good answers. That's what really ticked this uh, fellow off, off because I had my ducks in a row. He, for example, said, well, uh, what makes you think that you're supposed to do these things? And I said, where, where in the Bible is it? He said, I'm glad you asked. I just finished doing First and Second Thessalonians, right? There's a great example of those believers in Thessalonica in the first century of how to behave and how to share your faith. They went above and beyond the call and around the whole region seeking out people to share their faith with. You know what his answer was? Well, you don't live in the first century in Thessalonica. Wow, really? Then why is it in the Bible? This is only for Thessalonica and uh, Thessalonian believers in the first century. They're not alive anymore. Obviously, in the language in that those, uh, those letters was this is a uh, commendable behavior for all believers to emulate. So even Paul said the believers asked the Thessalon uh, believers in Thessalonica to pray for Paul and his group that they would be as as uh, worthy of commendation as they were. And, and these were young believers. Defend the faith. Contend for the faith. We're going to look at that. How do you defend the faith? You argue for it. And take up your cross. These are overlapping ideas. We'll take a highlight some of them. Seek out opportunities. Wow. Oh, you're not supposed to seek out opportunities because you never know if the opportunity may go sour. Well, most of the time it will. And I got accused of saying, look, you're not getting that many followers on your website or on your YouTube. I said, well, Jesus only got 12. And he was the son of God. Am I supposed to do anything less? Oppose what the world represents. You're not going to be popular if you, you're going to say things uh, that I, I don't represent. Uh, some of the attitudes people have towards sex and uh, different kinds of uh, obscene behaviors. Uh, I don't go out there and criticize people. I just tell them what my philosophy is. And by dint of the fact that I, I don't practice the things that they do, I don't have four-letter words flying out of my mouth left and right like the guy I met on the trolley last night. I just sat there and quietly listened to him go on and on and on about he's going to kill people. He doesn't care about uh, the uh, the chair, blah, 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 you know, execution and so on and so forth. I just sat and turned to him, looked at him, and gave him a little note that showed the website or the YouTubes that he can go look at. I didn't hard, hardly didn't get a word in edgewise, but I waited for the opportunity. I could have gotten up and walked away, but I waited for the opportunity. In any case, let's go to one of the things that I argue about most often. And I was actually supposed to be asked to be removed 
for my congregation because see you can get this again I was at removed from they went to the pastor and said he's talking about things that we don't like to hear and the pastor said well I work with him on that study and so leave him alone he's doing a great job you all are all do that so Let's see if I can get this going here. The links aren't working. There we go. Table of contents. There we go. Okay. Defend the faith. A Christian is required to make an active and fearless defense of truths from God's word to unbelievers and believers alike. So every believer has his duty. Critics of faithful Christians, especially counselors, giving testimony in public, that one should neither be direct nor firm nor argumentative nor offensive in one's manner toward others, especially fellow believers, when speaking of truths from God's word, especially if it causes an offense, even a perceived one such as my personal New York accent and my strong voice. I have a strong voice. I, you know, I used to sell a lot, 20, 22 years or so, and uh, you learn to speak up, make sure you're distinctly heard so you don't uh, annoy your, your customer. And he says, okay, I've heard enough, goodbye. They're, they're that abrupt in New York or elsewhere. Even one's tone or volume of voice or demeanor must not be perceived as offensive, even if imaginary. How am I going to know that that's going to happen? Heaven forbid if I am not dressed properly or have a suitable appearance to suit my audience or speak in an accent that is not acceptable to someone in the audience. I'm always going to offend somebody. That's another nonsensical thing. You're talking to maybe three or four people you've never met before in a trolley or bus or uh, someplace uh, in, a, in a shopping center like Walmart, uh, you don't know who's overhearing you, who you're going to, you're going to offend somebody. Just the fact that you're talking, or your shopping cart's in the way. So you can never t say anything if you're a Christian, because you're always going to offend somebody in some manner. One time a pastor's wife told me to stop sharing my faith with others, and just let people see the Jesus in me without speaking. Wonder how many people understood, understand the gospel by being silent. My discussion with her was cordial, but she decided I was not acceptable as a Christian to her. On the other hand, it is often not possible to determine who is truly a believer and who is not, who is mature and who is not, who will be offended and who will not, nor is it always possible to avoid being in, our, in an argumentative mood, one which is defending the doctrines of the faith in the face of those who counter what you are saying with their own point of view, which does not follow God's word. Should I just be quiet and say, let's agree to disagree? Jesus never said that. Albeit there is nothing wrong with arguing or speaking of an opposing point of view, especially if it is an accurate one, which comes from God's word. Jesus argued all the time. Just check out Matthew 23 below. We have it. I have a link below. Hey, he was ruthless, but accurate. And isn't God ruthless in, the, in standing up for his own justification and perfect righteousness? Absolutely. For there is hardly ever universal agreement by everyone, even when God's word is being accurately communicated. So anything you say will most likely be in opposition to what someone else believes, even if accurate from Scripture. Or they are offended by some inconsequential mannerisms that you have. On the other hand, Scripture says differently. Jude 1, chapter 1, there's only one chapter, verse 3. Dear friends, fellow believers, although I was very eager to write you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith. What is contending? We'll see. That was once for all entrusted to the saints. Contend. Argue. Means argue. Webster's Dictionary. To strive, a vie in contest, rivalry, or against difficulty. To strive in debate. Argue. Where's argue? You know, you can be argumentative in an annoying way, and that might be legitimate if you're arguing about every little thing, or you're arguing with obscenities, or interruptions, or rude behavior. <clears throat> or how about just presenting politely and in time in, as in a discussion an opposing point of view? That's an argument. That's how you should argue, right? You can do the right thing, but in an abusive manner or a violent manner, that isn't the right thing. See? So maintain or assert. So if you maintain or assert, that's contention. He's always contentious. Well, if, if you argue about a lot, a lot of times I argue about a lot of things or I present points of view, but when I have nothing to say, I listen or ask questions. I can learn something. A lot of people love to have you.